Thank you, Mazi. Uh, very excited to be here. Hello, everyone. Uh, I think this is FactSet's first um, attendance at this event. We look forward to many more. And we're delighted to work with this great OpenFin team um, as we begin our mission to disaggregate our workstation, innovate as far as data and content uh, on the platform go. So, bit of a quote. Um, the way I look at this quote is that clients tend to be buyers or builders, and oftentimes they tend to be buyers and builders. Um, there's a lot of business cost pressure out there to try to find efficiencies uh, in this environment, regulatory and compliance pressures. And uh, especially for folks on the buy side, the, the mission to find alpha is imperative. Um, and good content and good workflow is how we expect our clients to get there. What I'd like to spend a few minutes tonight talking about is the search for the next generation workstation and how FactSet's approach is to get there. So um, when I thought about this at length, uh, I sort of came up with a couple of items that I thought were constituents uh, of that workstation. The building blocks of a next gen workstation essentially has to start with content. Without content, you can't really build any visualizations. The concordance of that content becomes critical, and we're going to talk a bit about uh, content concordance in the next slide. Uh, technology is key. Uh, I'm an engineer. FactSet has 1,500 engineers. Uh, some of them are here tonight, uh, Kate and Bilal. Uh, I encourage you to go out and meet them. We also have uh, our sales engineering head, uh, Patrick Starling, and we have our head of product development, Don. Please meet them afterwards and talk about your needs. But technology is key. Uh, facts that operates 14 global data centers globally. And we really believe that analytics, machine learning, and artificial intelligence at the security level, the portfolio level, and the aggregate level is really what's going to drive alpha. The one thing, though, that's sitting in the middle, which is a different color, is interoperability. In a multi-vendor ecosystem where you move beyond the, the captive terminal of a single vendor, we need to have data interop and directive interop. So a couple numbers about FactSet just for fun. Um, some numbers up top that are corporate. We have just under 100,000 terminals, about 5,000 clients, and about 10, 000, under 10,000 employees in, with 63 different offices. That's all wonderful. But what we're hearing from the industry in general is the wish and desire on the sell side, buy side, and wealth side to have more freedom and agility to build the things that they want to build in a multi-vendor ecosystem. Well, we believe content and analytics are key. And FactSet, over the years, founded in 1978, public in 96, uh, has collected 1,000 content sets. And we've concorded all of them for seamless aggregation. The way I view the stack, um, the way hopefully we all view the stack, is technology, a strong technology base is imperative. On top of that, and that's web technologies, storage technologies, virtualization technologies, et cetera, sits content. Content's king. Uh, you need to have great fundamental content and ownership content and unique content. That's big data. You need to be able to concord all that content with client content. In other words, if I'm an asset manager and I'm running a thousand different portfolios, how do those portfolios uh, uh, concord into, join into all that commercial content? All right, so now we have big data, we have databases. We have SQL, we have NoSQL. On top of that, we have apps and components. These are units of work or units of transformation that are then acting upon that data. Well, that's all great too, but at the end of the day, what our clients are trying to achieve is efficiency of workflow. So workflows are built of apps, apps are built of content, content's built on technology. Put all these together and we have solutions. We want to build solutions. All right, so three ways of building that solution or three steps to building a great solution. Like building a house, you start with an assessment or a survey. You then start with a discussion with an architect on a blueprint. Once you have a blueprint defined, you talk about, with a general contractor about the price and timelines of getting from that survey to that fin final blueprint. We believe finance is the same exact way. But in doing so, we have a lot more options today. And with OpenFin in a disaggregated or unbundled or, um, I guess, lots of other great words for that, but in an unbundled world, there's about uh, two orders of magnitude more choice, where you're going to hear from Scott Logic later. I had the pleasure of meeting this gentleman. Um, it's all about design. How do you put components together in ways that are meaningful uh, to the financial markets? Interoperability is hard. 
which is why putting uh, components together is hard. And concordance is hard. Getting data right is hard. But if you get both right, you have a lot more agility than you had before. So this is a really dense slide, but I think it's really important to spend some time thinking about the fact that, uh, that standards are great because there's so many of them. And with the standards on symbology, here's maybe two dozen different symbology standards, depending on the asset class or what you're talking about. How you reference a person, a listing, a security, an entity, um, a deal, a ship, um, a cargo shipment. These are all various different symbologies. But they all need to interrelate in order to do big data work. And that's what we want to do. If we want to see our combined risk of uh, our emerging markets portfolio to North Korea or to any subsidiary or any look-through of any mutual fund that happens to have holdings that depend on anything to do with North Korea or Crimea or any other geopolitically sensitive region, we're going to need some pretty intense big data. And we're going to need a workflow around that. And these are some of the questions that our clients ask. Leverage. Go from bond to parent company to overall leverage because you're about to do an M&A deal. So components dry, are driven by this data, which is driven by a symbology. Symbology is hard to do. Bax has spent 30 years trying to do it. Here's another view of that world. Data combined with wonderful um, designs, and there's a lot of people in this room who are spending a lot of time with JavaScript and HTML5 building some amazing work. We use ChartIQ in our engines, and uh, those folks have done an amazing job on design. But that design needs to use the data but at the end of the day, you're still trying to achieve a financial workflow. Portfolio construction, portfolio risk, reporting, performance. Um, that's where we do our top-down approach. So this is the way we sort of view the universe. OpenFin is an innovator in the concept of a local bus. The ability to send data between component one and component two using Chromium or a binary on the desktop. It becomes a unifier in a multi-vendor ecosystem. But if person A and person B want to chat with each other or have some conversation, the mechanism to do that, we believe, should be something like a symphony. So here's an example. We have an analyst in London who is looking into a deal or looking into a stock or uh, maybe want to increase some holdings after an earnings report. He has a quote, a news, and a chart up. And he's got that chart set just right and a news filter set just right uh, and so forth. And he wants to tell his PM on a, a good number of funds that he should spend some time looking into this stock and do further research. He pushes a button, a URL gets formed, fins, colon, slash, slash. It gets sent by a symphony, pops up on the other person's screen. He pushes it, and suddenly the windows form in context, and the exploration continues. That's collaboration. I'll show you a demo. I've been told there's no questions, so. Good for me. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can do this gracefully. Um, so the way FactSet started, uh, FactSet started as C++ and C Sharp. Ooh, there's my backyard. Hold on. <laughs> so FactSet started as a C++, C Sharp app, a classic uh, binary client side uh, WFC type uh, technologies. And here's a, here's a trading view. Uh, then we just decided that we want to move into hiring people who knew JavaScript and HTML. So we started creating um, versions of our applications that rendered in various toolkits from Angular and React and others, Bandit. Um, I think that may be inter our internal name. But moving into Vue uh, is, our, is our next, uh, one of our next phases. This application is now HTML, but this application is a monolithic application. So if I want to see an entity structure for Heinz, there's an entity structure for Heinz. If I want to go see uh, M&A deals on um, Craft, I click on there and I see the data. There's a lot of data coming in here, and here is a deal where Craft, if you folks remember, tried to buy Unilever but failed. This is information on that deal. A deal is a thing. It needs concordance. It needs symbology. It ties together Kraft and Unilever. That's an important symbology link in the concordance. If you see in the top left, that's actually the deal ID. Here's information on the deal with all sorts of interesting data underneath the covers and all the codes used to audit and build up that data. Wonderful. But then I maybe want to see what would have happened if uh, this went through. 
what would have happened to the market? And I can see here that there's overlap between uh, what Kraft is and what Unilever is, and where there are business units that overlap and business units that are new. I can see what percentage of the market Kraft and Unilever would have taken, you know, 9% of a $357 billion market in personal care and cleaning products. Interesting, right? So this sort of analysis is done using tools and visualizations, but there's workflows behind it. The next thing we did is we said, well, that's great. We have HTML embedded in Chromium inside of our C++ container that needs to be installed on Windows and updated. Great. Well, how about raw web? So lift, drop. We now have uh, monolithic applications sitting in raw web in a container itself. But that's really no different uh, in the world of unbundling or disaggregation. So next phase, let's take a Ginsu knife and start slicing and dicing the applications into individual components. We've taken the Lego Death Star and we've made Lego blocks of them. And that's what we have today. The option to now pick using a, a simple URL any one of our components in context to any of the symbols being presented. Well, that's great. So now we've suddenly sliced and diced everything into lots of ingredients. We now need chefs to put them back together. And our clients are, are wanting to do that. But if you put it back together and put it in different browsers, you got a problem. You don't have communication. You don't have workflow. That's where OpenFin comes into play. OpenFin allows us now to have a bus. So we believe in OpenFin as a huge enabler for the buy side and the sell side to re-aggregate these Lego blocks or ingredients into meaningful workflows across multiple vendors with a common symbology and workflow. That's going to revolutionize the financial industry, we believe, from the perspective of market data, if you have good content, good visualizations, and good workflow designers. Last piece, I'm going to show you a live demo of what it looks like inside OpenFin. Obviously, single sign-on is required. Uh, otherwise, this becomes a little annoying to have to sign in into the components. This is actually OpenFin. We built a, a scaffold in Node uh, to show a various facet views that are operating inside of OpenFin. And you can imagine, if there's a bus underneath this, we can blast. We can send data back and forth. We could have uh, a Symfony chat sitting right here in a window. Blast to it, send items back and forth. We could have trades. We could have other analytics engines, other risk engines, seamless menus. I don't know what the symbology is for seamless food, but you could probably use that too. Um, you can do all sorts of things. And I don't think we've even scratched the surface about what we can do. Um, the value proposition of this is this also allows a firm like us, FactSet, to start to use artificial intelligence on the many, many millions of portfolios we get every night, run them through our risk and analytics engines, and be in more of a push mechanism on alerting for artificial intelligence and machine learned based um, concentration type risks. Uh, geopolitical events happen in real time. Why should you not be alerted on your portfolio in real time? Uh, one shout out here. If you're looking at a charting engine, chart IQ is pretty rocking. And obviously, it's fully HTML. And we leverage it here. And it's just another component in our you know, hundreds of components available to the financial world. I'm going to wrap up. I think I'm over on time um, with this fun slide. Um, the things that we need, content. Content's the start. Content is king. Concordance ties all content together within and without fact set. And co uh, concordance is also available as a service. Uh, interoperability, we are on the consortium, the FCD consortium run by Chuck here, uh, Chuck Danielson. I think that's a wonderful thing because that's going to build a common language between apps. Uh, those building blocks allow all of us and all of our clients to start to build the next generation workstation for specific workflows, and that's where the next generation desktop hits the financial market. Uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it, and uh, 